Hello video editors. Welcome to Solly Tutorials. Want to become a professional video editor? This is a great step. Well done for deciding to learn with this complete Filmora 13 video editing course. Filmora 13 is the king of video editors, with all the tools you need and more. I've been using it for over 7 years, and I've taught and helped many people learn it too. In this free course, I'll show you everything you need to know to become a perfect video editor, from basic to advanced techniques. I'll also teach you tips and tricks for Filmora 13 and video editing in general. We'll cover everything from importing and exporting videos to super slow motion, speed ramping, color matching, color correction, green screen removal and replacement, background removal without green screen, and object removal. We'll also learn how to use advanced AI portrait and smart cutout tools, AI masking, AI image stylizer, motion tracking, stabilization, lens correction, photo and video animations, transitions, effects, titles, VFX text, and more. Of course, no video editing course would be complete without covering intros and outros, stickers, split screens, background music, sound effects, and AI music generation. We'll cover all of that too. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about stock footage. I'll reveal some interesting footage about Filmora's stock media partners. We'll also cover creating and customizing 3D text, and I'll share some very important tips and tricks to help you avoid common video editing obstacles. I'll even show you some software settings that will help your system perform better and enable smoother video editing. Finally, I'll teach you how to create custom thumbnails and export videos for different devices with the best settings. We've covered a lot in this course, but we've tried to teach Filmora 13 in depth. I hope it fulfills your dream of taking your video editing confidence level from zero to hero. So, without further ado, let's dive right in and save you some precious time. Alright, folks, in this segment of our Filmora 13 complete video editing tutorial, we're diving into both the basics and the more advanced aspects of motion tracking. So, for the first set of motion tracking tricks, we're kicking things off by tracking some text. To get started, I'm going to import a couple of videos from my computer. Take a look, for these two motion tracking tricks, I've brought in two additional videos into Filmora. Now, one of these videos looks something like this. I'll be using it for the basic motion tracking. Simple enough, just drag and drop the video onto the timeline. Once that's done, position the playhead over the video, head to the text tool, and give it a click. Then, hit the quick text option. And there you have it, text added right where your playhead is. Drag and drop this text onto the track above your video. It's crucial to have the text on the track above your motion tracking video. If you want to tweak the text, just double click on it. In the title panel, under the basic section, you can customize your text in various ways. Whether it's choosing the font, adjusting the size, or selecting different styles, it's all right there. Once you're content with your text edits and settings, it's time to dive into motion tracking. Select the video, hit the motion tracking tool. Now, you'll notice a plus sign for motion tracking on your video, place it where you want to track. Click on the motion tracking tool button to kickstart the process. And you'll see a motion tracking notification dialog pop up, just click OK. Head over to the Motion Tracking tab in the AI Tools panel. In this section, you'll find a link element box. Whatever is on top of your motion tracking video track will be in this box. Since we have text above the video track, its link is in this box. So, select text from here. After selecting, our text is seamlessly tracked along with the video, making basic motion tracking a breeze in Filmora 13. Now, let's kick it up a notch and delve into some professional, pro-level motion tracking in Filmora 13. For this, I've brought in another video by dragging and dropping it onto the timeline. This video features a couple rocking skating shoes, and we're about to showcase some next-level motion tracking. Brace yourselves, we've added neon wings behind both of them.
Let's get started. First things first, position your playhead where you want to initiate motion tracking. I've chosen this segment where the magic happens. Split the video at this point, and for the end part, that's where we're going to work our motion tracking magic. Easily duplicate this end part by dragging and dropping the video with a left click while holding down the ALT key, a handy shortcut. Double click on the middle section, head to the AI section, and flick the motion tracking tool button on. Now, place the plus sign in the back area of our male character. This will be our motion tracking focus. Click on the motion tracking tool button to kickstart the process. Once it's done, the selected area will be flawlessly tracked. Repeat the same process for the duplicate part. Select the duplicate video, head to the AI section, and flick the motion tracking tool button on. Choose the back area of the girl for motion tracking, and follow the identical motion tracking steps. Voila! The duplicate part showcases motion tracking behind the girl. While the initial part features motion tracking behind the male. Once you've designated the motion tracking areas for both videos and completed the analysis, you're good to go. It's as simple as that. Now, let's move on to the next step. In this phase, we'll incorporate the neon wings. Head over to the stickers tab to kick things off. Give it a click. And in the search bar, type in neon wing stickers. As you can see, there are various types to choose from. We'll opt for two specific neon wing stickers, one being the red neon wings and the other the blue neon wings. Navigate the playhead to the first video clip where our motion tracking centers around the male. Drag and drop the blue sticker onto the timeline. Adjust the size and position of the neon wing by double-clicking on the sticker, heading to Transform, and scaling it down. I've set it at roughly 40 scale and positioned it at the back area of the male, aligning with our motion tracking. Next, select the video, go to Motion Tracking, open the Link Element box, and link the neon wings to the video. If the element's position shifts after linking, readjust as needed. Repeat the same process for the motion tracking area of the female in the second video clip. Head back to the stickers tab, drag and drop the red neon wing sticker onto the timeline over the corresponding clip. Adjust the size and position. Then select the video, go to motion tracking, and link the red neon wing sticker to the video. If the element's position shifts after linking, readjust as needed. Now, let's bring both sets of wings into one video. Move the blue neon wing sticker up two tracks above the first video clip, maintaining a two-track gap. Select the second video clip and its sticker, then drag them into the two empty tracks between the first video and its sticker. Voila! Our next level motion tracking effect is now ready. This seamless combination of blue and red neon wings adds a professional touch to your project. It's an effective and visually appealing trick that you'll likely find incredibly useful in your own projects.
Now, let's move on to applying stabilization to the video. Before we delve into video stabilization, let me provide a quick rundown of what it is and its significance. Video stabilization is the process of minimizing or eliminating undesired camera shake or motion blur in a video. It plays a crucial role in enhancing the overall quality of our video footage. Now, let's explore how to apply video stabilization in Filmora 13. To begin, double-click on the video you want to stabilize, then head to the iTools section in the video panel. Here, you'll find the stabilization option. Activate it. Under stabilization, locate the analysis button and click on it. This initiates the stabilization analysis, working to eliminate or reduce any unwanted camera shake or motion blur in your video. Now, keep in mind that if your video didn't have much shake or blur to begin with, the stabilization effect might not be noticeably apparent. However, for videos with evident imperfections, applying stabilization can significantly enhance overall quality. Moving on, let's discuss lens correction. Lens correction is the process of rectifying imperfections in a camera's lens. Let me demonstrate how to perform lens correction on this video. Select the video, then navigate to the iTools section in the video panel. Under Stabilization, activate the Lens Correction option. Within Lens Correction, you'll find a device model box. Open it. Within this section, you'll encounter an array of lens correction device model presets. Notably, the GoPro Hero device models offer an extensive selection of lens presets, including options for the Ion Camera Air Pro 3, Panasonic HXA1 device lens, Ricoh WGM1 lens, Sony FDR-X300, and Sony HDR-AS50 device lenses. From this assortment, pick the lens that aligns with your preferences and complements your video. In the realm of video editing, lens correction plays a pivotal role in enhancing the quality of your footage. It's akin to giving your videos a makeover, rectifying the flaws introduced by the camera lens, and guaranteeing that your audience experiences the content with clarity and precision. Despite their sophisticated technology, cameras are not impervious to capturing images with imperfections. These imperfections, stemming from the lens design or manufacturing process, can manifest in various forms, diminishing the overall visual appeal of your videos. Additionally, you have the flexibility to set the resolution and fine-tune the adjust level of lens correction to suit your specific video needs. Now, let's shift our focus to the process of grouping images on the timeline and applying consistent duration and animation. To initiate this, select the images by left-clicking while holding down the control key on your keyboard. Drag and drop the selected images onto the timeline. Initially, I want to synchronize and adjust their duration collectively. To achieve this, click on the duration tool while the images are selected. Input your desired duration. For example, I'll set it to 3 seconds instead of the default 5 seconds. Click Save. And voila! The duration of our images is now uniformly set. Similarly, you can effortlessly adjust the duration of multiple images simultaneously. In this instance, I'll set the duration of these images to 2 seconds. Following that, you can also effortlessly apply animations to all these images with just a single click if you desire. To do this, select all the pictures and click on the Edit tool. Within the multiple panel, navigate to the Animation section, where you'll encounter two types of animations, Preset Animations and Preset Motions Legacy Animations. I prefer to opt for Preset Motions Legacy Animations, so select that from the Animation box. With the images already selected on the timeline, Click on any preset motion legacy animation, and voila! The animation is now applied uniformly to all images. Similarly, you can apply animations to all images simultaneously by double-clicking on any animation. Let me demonstrate by previewing some animations.
If you have numerous images on your timeline that require cropping, you can achieve this in a single click. Typically, we crop each picture individually, which can be time-consuming. Instead, I'll show you a quick and one-click fit method. With all the pictures selected, right-click and choose the Crop to Fit option. Alternatively, use the shortcut Ctrl plus F. These are the kinds of tricks that can streamline your editing process, making it more efficient and saving you valuable time. Now, let's move on to applying transitions. To do this, navigate to the Transitions tab at the top and click on it. Here, you'll find a variety of free and paid transitions. But before we dive into that, let me briefly explain what transitions are and why they are essential. In the world of video editing, transitions are the bridges between scenes, the invisible threads that weave together a captivating narrative. Transitions are a crucial aspect of video editing, serving as the visual bridges that connect scenes and enhance storytelling. Filmora 13 offers a wide range of transitions, spanning various styles and effects, to help you create seamless and engaging videos. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to use and apply transitions in Filmora 13. To apply a transition, simply drag and drop it from the transition library onto the timeline, positioning it between the two video clips you want to connect. To adjust the duration and settings of a transition, double-click on it to open the Properties panel. From here you can select the transition mode. Here you will find three transition modes. Prefix mode, overlap, and post-fix mode which moves the position of the transition to the clip center and start and end. You can then drag the slider under duration to shorten or lengthen the transition's effect. And so I quickly drag and apply transitions over all the footage in the project. Feel free to experiment with different transitions to find the ones that best suit your video style and narrative. Try combining various transitions to create unique visual effects that enhance your storytelling. By following these guidelines and tips, you can effectively utilize transitions in Filmora 13 to create visually appealing and engaging videos that captivate your audience and enhance your storytelling. We've covered a lot of ground in Chapter 3. We started with motion tracking, which allows you to track the movement of an object in your video and add text, graphics, or other effects to it. We also learned how to stabilize shaky video footage and correct lens distortion. In addition, we explored simplified animation techniques, such as keyframing and motion presets, and learned how to crop your videos to the desired aspect ratio. Finally, we discussed the importance of transitions in storytelling and how to use them to create a smooth and engaging viewing experience. Stay tuned for Chapter 4, where we dive into advanced features and techniques. Happy editing!